So when we talk about age-related changes to the reproductive system, most of the work that's really been done is understanding how reproduction changes in females rather than males. And so we're going to focus first on um, what controls uh, some of the reproductive functions um, in the female reproductive system and then how they change with age as well as a little bit about what is known for how um, age affects the reproductive system in males. And so first, it's important to understand that the menstrual cycle in females is controlled by a series of hormones. <clears throat> so to begin with, follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, and luteinizing hormone, or LH, are two hormones that are made and secreted by the pituitary gland in the brain. And they act on the ovaries of the reproductive system. And what follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone kind of act together to do is to cause the ovary to release an unfertilized egg or an ovum, as well as promote the secretion of estrogen and progesterone by the ovaries. And estrogen and progesterone are two additional hormones <coughs> that have um, some additional functions which can be seen down here, right? And so all together, FSH, LH, and estrogen work to promote ovulation or the release of that egg from the ovary into the fallopian tubes. Estrogen and progesterone help to prepare the uterus for potential implantation of a fertilized egg, as well as providing some negative feedback, which we'll talk about in a second. But what I'd like to <coughs> just bring your attention to here is the levels of hormones that occur, or the levels of hormones, um, estrogen in purple, FSH in blue, LH in red, and then progesterone in green and how these hormones vary throughout this 28-day menstrual cycle. Right? And so you can see here at around day 14 of the cycle, a large kind of boost in luteinizing hormone and a slight spike accompanying that of follicle-stimulating hormone. And then following these spikes, there is a release of estrogen, or I'm sorry, progesterone in green. Um, that leads to the kind of later portions of the menstrual cycle. So as I said, estrogen and progesterone <coughs> have a, a ability to feed back onto the pituitary gland. And what that means is that once estrogen is secreted from the ovaries, it actually acts on the pituitary gland itself and stops it from secreting any more luteinizing hormone or follicle stimulating hormone. And that negative feedback of estrogen on the pituitary gland leads to kind of that cycle, right, of menstruation, where there's a lot of estrogen at some point, it's able to feed back on the pituitary gland, which stops secretion of LH and FSH. And normally what LH and FSH do are promote the secretion of estrogen. So if they're now turned off, they're no longer acting on the ovary, they're no longer making estrogen, and estrogen levels will fall. And as they fall, that negative feedback on the pituitary gland gets released. And then LH and FSH can um, stimulate the ovary to make estrogen, and the whole thing can start again. And what I'd like to draw your attention to in this diagram is that LH and FSH are not specific to female <coughs> reproductive system. Both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone um, work on work to stimulate the male testes as well. And they stimulate the production of testosterone in the testes. And testosterone is what promotes formation of the sperm or spermatogenesis, as well as promotes male secondary sex characteristics. And in the same way that estrogen does, testosterone is also able to negatively feed back on the pituitary gland. <coughs> and so what happens with age? At least in terms of the female reproductive system, a lot of this information is has been relatively well studied. One thing that um, happens is that there's a decrease in the number of oocytes and follicles. And the number of oocytes and follicles exist in the ovary. And since oocytes and follicles are necessary to help promote estrogen and progesterone production, 
This decrease in the number of these two <coughs> uh, structures leads to a decrease in estrogen and progesterone production. And this decline in estrogen, mostly, is what marks the beginning of a period called menopause. And menopause is probably a term you've heard of, um, but might not be one that you have experienced. And so there are several changes that occur to the female body as well as the female reproductive system um, that happen during menopause as a result of this decline in estrogen. One thing that um, happens is that oocytes can no longer develop, right? So development of eggs declines. Another thing that happens is that the uterus as, and the vagina decrease in size. So estrogen has a function as kind of a pro-growth hormone um, and a loss of estrogen actually results <coughs> in a loss of some of these tissues. Additionally, the vaginal wall thins as a result of the decline in estrogen. And that thinning of the vaginal wall results in a change in the pH because normally there are a lot of <coughs> secretions coming from the vaginal wall that maintain kind of a slightly acidic pH within the vagina itself. And these uh, pH changes that happen during menopause and the kind of increasing pH from acidic to basic increases the risk of developing bacterial infections um, in the reproductive system as well. Additionally, the thinning of the vaginal wall can also lead to pain during sex, which is sometimes a thing that's highlighted in um, <coughs> commercials. So as I said, the decline in estrogen does not only affect the reproductive system itself, but a lot of other um, body systems as well, right? And so first, decrease in estrogen actually um, leads to a loss of bone mass and bone minerals, which can uh, kind of lead to osteoporosis. The decline in estrogen also can lead to hot flashes. Um, and that has to do with the relationship between estrogen and luteinizing hormone. And so luteinizing hormone has a role, not only here in the reproductive system, but also in thermal regulation or helping our bodies kind of keep the appropriate temperature. And without estrogen to <laughs> inhibit luteinizing hormone, it doesn't have the same ability to thermoregulate correctly, which can lead to a hot flash or your body being too hot and not being able to cool itself. Additionally, um, decline in estrogen actually increases the risk of both heart disease um, and cancers. So now in terms of the male reproductive system and some age-related changes, one thing um, that's important to note is that any age-related anatomical changes don't seem to really affect the ability of, or the fertility of males, right? And so um, erectile dysfunction is often thought of as an age-related issue. It turns out that erectile dysfunction is actually more related to other medical issues and more highly correlated with those other underlying conditions than it is with age. And erectile dysfunction does not affect fertility, right? Um, and the accompanying kind of decrease in size of the testes that results from a loss of testosterone also might change the anatomy of the male reproductive system and, you know, result in the decreased size of the testes, but it doesn't actually affect fertility. <coughs> Um, as males age, one thing that um, does happen and that can affect fertility is that the Sertoli cells inside the testes, which are sort of the sperm supporting cells, become replaced with a fibrous tissue. And rather than having supportive Sertoli cells, uh, sperm don't have access to this, they have this fibrous tissue. And this ultimately leads to less sperm per ejaculation. And that can actually lead to a decrease in fertility that's associated with age. Additionally, uh, there are testosterone producing cells within the, in the testes called Leydig cells. And these Leydig cells become less responsive to luteinizing hormone. And so normally what luteinizing hormone does, right, is promote, uh, is act on Leydig cells, cause them to produce testosterone, 
and testosterone is what promotes spermatogenesis. When the Leydig cells can't sense that luteinizing hormone and respond to it, there's less testosterone production and ultimately less sperm production overall. And the fact that there's less sperm production by the testes, as well as less sperm per ejaculation, is what might lead to changes or decline in male fertility that's related to age. <laughs> um, and one important thing to highlight as well is that while male and female fertility decreases with age, that does not necessarily mean anything about the ability to perform sexually. So for females, um, fertility ends relatively abruptly when the menopause, with the onset of menopause. Um, and estrogen and progesterone levels decrease immediately, um, as well as the genetic quality of the eggs kind of declines with age. All of these things together mean that fertility decreases. Um, but the ability to uh, perform sexually does not. As I mentioned earlier, there is some pain associated with, uh, there can be some pain associated with sex in older female individuals due to a decrease in the thickness of the vaginal lining might lead to pain, um, but it ultimately does not prevent um, sexual activity. The same is true for males. <coughs> and so um, unlike females, the fertility in males declines slowly, right? And so for females, fertility ends immediately as soon as menopause begins. For males, that fertility kind of undergoes a gradual, slow decline um, with no true end to reproductive lifespan. As well, testosterone levels decrease and the genetic quality of sperm declines with age. That can lead to fertility issues. But once again, um, sexual activity or the sexual performance is not affected by age in men. Um, Age-related impotence or the ability to kind of maintain an erection and perform sexually only occurs in about 15 to 20 percent of men. Um, <laughs> some of the other impotence um, and erectile dysfunction issues, as I said, are more related to underlying health conditions than they are to age itself. And so while for both male and females, fertility declines with age, um, in the case of females immediately, and males rather gradually, the ability to partake in sexual intercourse does not. Um, <coughs> and I think that's one important distinction to make when discussing age-related changes to the reproductive system.